Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and I've played through Pokemon more than most people. However, despite that, there are some Pokemon within the original 151, the oldest group of Pokemon, that I have never used on a playthrough team. Today, I'll be listing all those Pokemon along with why I haven't used them with used being defined as being on a league beating team or a core member of the team for most of the playthrough. First is Beedrill for pretty obvious reasons, bad typing and bad stats. While it does have a somewhat usable Mega, it has never been accessible in a playthrough. You may have noticed that I skipped over Butterfree, meaning I've used Butterfree, but not Beedrill. If you're wondering why that's the case, even though Butterfree is just as weak as Beedrill, it's because Butterfree's a flying type, so I used it for a chunk of my Team Sky and Leaf Green playthrough. But more importantly, it was on the final league-beating team in my Pokemon Shield but Pokemon Go Decides My Team video, where the team changed after every gym. So it's never been on a team start to finish, but it was there for a league victory, and that counts. Next is Pidgeot. Kind of? This may be surprising to you since it's the first regional bird, and I feel like everybody uses the regional bird at some point or another, but when I was younger, I was mainly just solo running with my starters, but then as I've gotten older, whenever Pidgeot's been available, so have better options. Kanto is full of fantastic flying types like Charizard or Dodrio or the legendary birds, Johto has Kenya the Fero, and Kalos has Talonflame. However, I did say kind of, since in my Leaf Green Team Sky playthrough, I used a Pidgey to Pidgeotto to Pidgeot called Mach for about half the playthrough, benching it after beating Koga and getting Articuno. So it was there for about five gyms, which is more than half the playthrough, but after a certain point, it was barely touching the battlefield because better Pokemon, specifically Gyarados and Dodrio, were taking care of all of that. So, like I said, it's very much a kinda. Speaking of Team Sky, there is new Team Sky merch! This stylish, comfy hoodie and sleek soft shirt are available at mnjtvmerch.com right now, alongside the new Hailstorm form of Mighty, my form-changing mascot. It gets this form when it experiences hail, of course, which gives it the superpower of being bulletproof. Also, since it's the hail form, look at this. It says, hail yeah, on his feet. You can get all three of these at mnjtvmerch.com, but only for a limited time, so grab them while you can. They will arrive before Christmas. The next Pokemon I've never used is Arbok. I've always thought Arbok was cool, but it's never been practical. Its base stats are not great, plus it's a pure poison type, an almost completely useless type before fairy was added. The only version of Kanto that has the fairy type is Let's Go. The best chance for Arbok was Grunty Boy's playthrough of Let's Go Pikachu since Arbok is a Team Rocket Pokemon. But Arbok is also a Let's Go Eevee exclusive. Oddly enough, I actually did do a Team Rocket playthrough of Let's Go Eevee several years ago when I still streamed. But Arbok didn't even make the final squad there because I already had other better poison types. Next is Nidoqueen, simply because every time it's been an option, so has Nidoking. And I just like Nidoking's design and stat spread more. After that is Clefable. If Clefable is not a fairy type, it is not useful, so that eliminates it from contention in five generations. It's quite good once it is a fairy type, but in all the games where it is an option as one, I've either wanted to use newer generation Pokemon more, or I just don't think it's that cool, so I'm like, eh. Next is Ninetales, sort of. I have used Alolan Ninetales, it being a member of both my first Ultra Sun team and my Ultra Moon with only Ice types team. However, I can't recall a time using Cantonian Ninetales, since if I want to use a Kanto Fire type, I tend to go for Charizard or Arcanine. Add on the fact that it's a version exclusive a lot of the times, plus in the Hoenn region it's found really late, and it's just never worked out. Also, last I checked, Alolan Ninetales was subscribed to my channel, while Cantonian Ninetales is not. So if you want to be cool and on my team, then you should subscribe and I can send you into battle. Next is Vileplume, at least I'm pretty sure. It's entirely possible as a kid that I did another playthrough. So like I had Leaf Green and did it with just my Blastoise and then I got Fire Red and maybe I used a team in that, but I can't be 100% certain, I don't remember. So I have to list it because I can't confirm that I've used it. I'm pretty sure I just simply haven't used it though. Despite Vileplume being in a lot of games, I've always ended up picking the Grass Starter, picking a much cooler Grass type like Breloom, for example, or just not using a grass type at all. 
Ha-ha! It is I, Grunty Boy! And boy, do I have something exciting for you today! A third character within this exchange! <gasps> Joe Jonas? No. That would be dope, though. Instead, it's Death Knight! Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video, is an action-packed, free-to-play game where you can collect and kick butt with hundreds of cool champions. And one of those is Death Knight. Tell us, Death Knight, you've been a beloved underdog character within the Raid community for a while. Don't you feel like you deserve an upgrade? Yes, yes, a thousand times, yes! Too bad! Raid is instead adding a new champion, Ultimate Death Knight. This brand new champion is stronger and more powerful and better than Death Knight in every way. Grunty boy, you're being a bit mean to Death Knight here. Look, look, I, I get it. Ultimate Death Knight's super great and awesome in the arena. But come on, we both know the guy you can count on is me. You said that at lunch, but look who forgot their wallet and stuck me with the tab. Oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Death Knight, are you sure you're okay with this whole ultimate Death Knight thing? Well, you know, it's so funny. Uh, when I saw all the marketing and media, I, I kind of assumed that I would transform from this into ultimate Death Knight. It really seemed like it was pointed in that very specific direction. I, I mean, ultimate Death Knight looks cool, but uh, I don't think he's as cool as me, right? Wrong! Ultimate Death Knight is amazing and everyone can get him during the Death Knight Hunt event. Oh, he's getting his own event? Darn right! Just log in and play Raid for seven days between now and October 27th and Ultimate Death Knight is yours for free. Free? Oh, no, 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 no. You can also use promo code DKRISES for free items to instantly level your new best champion all the way to level 50 and 5 star ascension. But they could also five star me, right? Well, uh, thanks for coming, Death Knight. Uh, sorry, it's been a bit of a rough week for you. Oh, we gotta do this again. Do we? Anyways, go download Raid using the link in the description below or by scanning the QR code on screen. New players will get a starter pack worth almost $30, including a free champion Virgies and this cool in-game loot. You'll find rewards here for 30 days only. And now I'm off to try and get the Death Knight smell out of my clothes. We shared a taxi here and Decay stinks. Ta-ta! Next is Parasect because it's straight up awful. Horrible stats and horrible typing. In Gen 1, Paris and Parasect were the only Pokemon to ever have three four times weaknesses because Bug was weak to poison back in the day. It's just, it's garbage through and through. The only way I ever use a Parasect is if I'm somehow forced into it or it gets like an evolution that's amazing. Like, even if it got another form, I still think its stats wouldn't be good enough to justify it. Venomoth is another kinda. In my first Let's Go playthrough ever, I got a random shiny Venonat that I caught and named Sky. I kept it on the team for as long as I could, but by about the halfway point, its poor battle prowess forced me to replace it. So I've never completed a game with one, but a cool blue one was there for a bit. Doug Trio is like Vileplume, where I feel like I may have used it as a kid in some repeat Fire Red or Leaf Green playthrough, but since I'm not certain, I have to list it. I've never used it as an adult though, because honestly, it's pretty weak. It's got great speed and then acceptable attack, but then a toddler could kill it with a feather. So Nidoking or Rhydon or Golem are just better ground type options. After that is Primeape. In Kanto playthroughs, fighting types just aren't very useful. There's no dark types, only one fully evolved steel type, no normal specialist, all of Lorelei's ice types have a secondary type you can exploit, and Brock has to be fought before you have access to any fighting types. The only exception is in yellow version where you can get a Mankey before Brock, which I used for the only time I've played yellow, but then I moved on from it. While I've used all the other Kanto fighting types in other games, I've never used Primeape because it's either not available or severely outclassed. Assuming you can trade, which I've always been able to, there is basically no reason to use Primeape over Machamp. And Machop is available in every game Mankey is, plus more. Victory Bell is the next one for the same reasons as Vileplume. In every game it's been available, I've either used the Grass Starter, a cooler Grass type, or no Grass type at all. One of the easiest games to use it in is probably the Johto game, since Bellsprout is found so early. But Johto doesn't have any gym leaders weak to grass. I've done several Johto playthroughs, but the only team that ended up including a grass type was my Team Sky one, which had a jump bluff. Tentacruel is the next Pokemon. Despite Tentacool being the ocean Zubat, Tentacruel actually has pretty solid stats. Tentacruel is a water type though which means it faces fierce competition from Water Starters, Gyarados, Lapras, 
and all of the other dozens of water types. And then it's a poison type, which as I've mentioned, was basically useless before fairy. I was able to make poison types work before fairy was introduced. And by that, I mean, I made Crobat work because I really liked Crobat and thought it looked really cool. And I don't think Tenacruel looks cool. Rapidash is kind of like Ninetales. In Kanto, I usually picked Charizard or Arcanine. Now it is one of only two fire type options in Diamond and Pearl, but I basically always play Platinum, or I just start with Infernape, or I just don't use a fire type. Rapidash does have a Galarian form, but I've just simply never ended up using it. Next is Slowbro, and like Tenacruel, it being a water type means fierce competition. While its secondary psychic type is quite good, especially in the earlier generations, that actually holds it back, because by the time I gain access to Slowpoke, I'm probably already using an Alakazam. Farfetch'd has been skipped for one obvious reason. It's garbage. Its base stat total is a mere 377, making it the second weakest fully evolved Pokemon in Kanto, with the only weaker one being Ditto, a Pokemon that instantly turns into something else. I tried Surfetch'd for a bit during my first Sword playthrough, but I liked both Grappelocked and Phalanx more, so I ended up using those in that playthrough and later ones. Dugong, Cloyster, and Kingler are other water types that I've passed over, for the same reasons as the others. Too many significantly better water type options. Cloyster is the best of the three, and I actually had one I used in the battle subway many years ago, but it's never been on a playthrough team. Executors like Vileplume and Victory Bell, I used the grass starter, a better or cooler grass type, or no grass type at all. Plus, Execute is basically always obtained significantly later than it seems like most other grass types, and if a Pokemon is obtained too late, I'm not gonna be keen on using it unless it's really good. I did use Exeggutor for one segment of my Pokemon Go Decides My Team video, but that's it. Coulda used it for more segments, but I didn't know that it was available in the game, so I was ignoring a lot of Alolan Exeggutors. Marowak is another kinda, because while I haven't used it for a playthrough, I did use it in my, oh, excuse me, Grunty Boys, playthrough of the Team Rainbow Rocket plotline. So it was a central part of the team, but not for a full playthrough. So I'm not really sure how that counts. I never used it before though, because it's stats suck. A normal type Pokemon has to be super impressive for me to consider using it on my team, since it's the least useful offensive type in the game. Lickitung and by extension Licky Licky are not even remotely impressive. And also like quite difficult to find, in red and blue, the only way to get a Lickitung is one in-game trade. I think it's the same for Farfetch'd. Why did they do that? Why did they put not good Pokemon hidden behind very tucked away in-game trades? Weezing is a pure poison type and thus not useful for most of Pokemon's history. While its Galarian form is significantly better, it hasn't worked out for my team in a Galar playthrough yet. Well, aside from one segment in my Pokemon Go Decides My Team video, but that was for only one badge. Chansey and by extension Blissey are more normal types that aren't good enough to overcome their normal type. I know they're quite good and competitive, especially Chansey if it's holding an Eviolite, but I, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna sit there and stall and soft boiled forever in a playthrough. No, I wanna outspeed and Oko things and Chansey can't do that. Kangaskhan is another normal type that's not impressive enough. While Mega Kangaskhan is incredibly overpowered, it's literally impossible to use one before beating the Pokemon League without trading. If you can't even trade. I don't actually know if Mega Stones can be traded. Seedra and thus Kingdra are really cool Pokemon I'm definitely down to use, but it's never been practical. In games where Kingdra is not possible, so the Kanto games, I am not using Seedra. It's the weakest fully evolved water type in Kanto, and that's saying a lot considering how many there are. Meanwhile, Kingdra is great with great typing, but Horsey is always found so late, long after I've needed another water type. Then we go to Sea King, the second worst fully evolved water type in Kanto, only 10 base stat total points stronger than Seedra, and it actually is fully evolved. Seedra gets saved by getting Kingdra added, Sea King gets nothing, which means it gets no use from me. Starmie though is far from the worst water type in Kanto, actually having decently good typing and quite good stats, and it was good enough for me to use one in online battles in gen six years back. However, like Horsey, Staryu is found too late in most games, needing the super rod most of the time to even find it. When there's dozens of water type options in basically every game, 
it just makes sense to go with one I can get sooner rather than hold off for a star you at the end of the game. Jinx is hard to find and not strong. Plus, I've never liked it. Three strikes, it's out. Electabuzz, or more specifically Electivire, I wouldn't consider it if Electivire wasn't an option, is another where it feels like I've used it, but I can't think of a specific example. Maybe I've just really wanted to for a while, but I've just ended up going with Magneton or Magnezone instead. Pinsir is a pure bug type. The bug type is the worst in the game. So if I'm gonna use a bug type, it's gotta either have a secondary typing that makes it better, or I've gotta think it looks really cool, or both. Pinsir has neither of those two things. So I've never used a pincer and don't intend to. Ditto is a gimmick Pokemon. It's just not practical to try to use it when you can never be certain what you'll be fighting with. I have used it a lot in the daycare though. <laughs> not me personally. I just realized that sounded really bad. Amastar and Kabutops are fine, but they're not strong enough to justify their late obtainment the second to last gym island. By that time, I always have a better water type. Aerodactyl's not in the same boat as them though, because uh, it's better and uh, Team Sky wanted one. Or I had a shiny one from Pokemon Go that I wanted to transfer into Let's Go and use on my first playthrough team. And that's the end of the list. Every Pokemon in the decks after Amistar and Kabutops, I've used at least once. Yes, even Mewtwo and Mew, thanks to a randomizer and the Pokeball Plus respectively. Don't forget to pick up Hailstorm Mighty or Team Sky merch at mngtvmerch.com, but only for a limited time. And thank you so much for watching. With an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon for helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link's in the description below. If you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here, and that is all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.